meditation has become one of the most popular of Eastern mind-body therapies that are used in healthcare services worldwide. Meditation in the yoga system, especially in the Ashtanga yoga system as codified by Maharishi Patanjali, is known as Dhyana and is the seventh of the eight limbs in the Ashtanga yoga system. It is preceded by the Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara and Dharana. All six steps leading into this state of meditation. The immediate step before Dhyana is Dharana, that is one point concentration. This concentration involves the self-effort, the focusing of one's intent using the buddhi, the intellectual aspect of our existence. We can focus our mind either on external objects or on internal objects. The cross, the subtle and going right up to the level of our causal existence. The flow from one-pointed concentration of dharana into a meditative state of awareness, a contemplative state known as dhyana, leads us upon factors and effort into the state of samadhi, which is absorption, where we are totally absorbed in our essential nature. This three-pointed aspect this three-pronged approach to the internal focusing of the mind is termed samyama. Samyama, where they are all flowing one into the other seamlessly. Dharana, dhyana and samadhi. Now, recent research has given us a lot of findings on the benefits, especially in the normal healthy individuals as well as in those who are having a varied aspect of diseases, disorders, both physical and mental. A recent mini-review by Ines that was published in the Frontiers in Psychiatry 2014 has showed us that the mechanics of how meditation helps us may be by the reduction in the sympathetic activity as well as the hypothalamo pituitary adrenal axis. This is the most important axis for the stress response, the stress reaction. And as we know, stress disorders are on the rise and virtually every disorder today is either caused, aggravated, worsened, precipitated by stress. And this is why meditation or more correctly dhyana, can be a potent antidote to stress because it reduces the sympathetic tone and the HPA axis activity or rather reactivity. On the other hand, it increases, it improves the vagal tone and the parasympathetic rebuilding, rehabilitative activity. It also changes the different neurochemical transmitters and how they are working in our body, especially the dopaminergic, the dopamine, especially the transmission related to dopamine and gamma aminobutyric acid, GABA. Both of these pathways of the neurochemical transmitters are essential for good health and meditation helps us to modulate the activity of the dopaminergic, the activity of the dopamine as well as the GABA systems. It has been found that it even brings about positive changes in brain structure and function, especially in areas such as the hippocampus, the prefrontal cortex and the anterior cingulate gyrus. Also offsetting the age-related cortical thinning that occurs. As we humans are growing older, thanks to the medical advancements that keep us alive and prevent us from dying, 
our brain is starting to atrophy. The meditation and proper lifestyle and attitudes that are all part and parcel of yoga enable us to offset these age-related degenerative negative effects and produce what in yoga is called a kaya kalpa, a rebuilding of one's body, emotion, mind and spirit even as we age, aging in a healthy manner. We also find in recent research that the telomerase, the enzyme that works on the end of your chromosomes, the telomeres, which are at the end of the chromosomes and part of the aging process. As we age, they sort of become shorter and shorter. But we find the telomerase activity that prevents them from becoming shorter, that starts to improve with meditative practice. Basically, all mind-body therapies work on similar me mechanisms. Basically, all mind-body therapies would work on similar mechanisms. But this has been documented that the meditation practices, even over a short period of a few weeks and a few months, can improve the telomerase activity and this brings about a change in our gene expression. We often say, what can I do? My genes are like that. I have defective genes. I cannot change my parents. But one of my professors of medicine once told us, your genes are like a loaded gun with your hand on the trigger. Whether the trigger is pulled or not, whether the gun goes off or not, depends on you. What is the attitude you are going to take towards life? How are you going to live life? What are you going to eat? This is in our hands. And this is what the meditation techniques bring about a meditative awareness. That awareness that enables us to become responsible. Responsible for our own health and happiness. That is the biggest message that meditation gives us.